I myself have never been able to find out precisely what feminism is, I only know that people call me a feminist whenever I express sentiments that differentiate me from a doormat. There is, of course, no reason for the existence of the male sex except that one sometimes needs help with moving the piano. Idiocy is the female defect. It is no worse than the male defect, which is lunacy. Whatever happens, never forget that people would rather be led to perdition by a man, than to victory by a woman. We think in youth that our bodies are identical to ourselves and have the same interests but discover later in life that they are heartless companions who have been accidentally yoked with us, and who are as likely as not, in our extreme sickness or old age, to treat us with less mercy than we would have received at the hands of the worst bandits. Art is not a luxury, but a necessity. No great thing happens suddenly. The trouble about man is twofold. He cannot learn truths which are too complicated, he forgets truths which are too simple. The main difference between men and women is that men are lunatics and women are idiots. All our Western thought is founded on this repulsive pretense that pain is the proper price of any good thing. You must always believe that life is as extraordinary as music says it is. Did St. Francis preach to the birds? Whatever for? If he really liked birds he would have done better to preach to the cats. Literature must be an analysis of experience and a synthesis of the findings into a unity. Writing has nothing to do with communication between person and person, only with communication between different parts of a person's mind. Nobody ever wrote a good book simply by collecting a number of accurate facts and valid ideas. Marriage had certain commercial advantages. By it the man secures the exclusive right to the woman's body and by it, the woman binds the man to support her during the rest of her life. A more disgraceful bargain was never struck. Existence in itself, taken at its least miraculous, is a miracle. Any authentic work of art must start an argument between the artist and his audience. I find to my astonishment that an unhappy marriage goes on being unhappy when it is over. Motherhood is the strangest thing, it can be like being one's own Trojan horse. I wonder if we are all wrong about each other, if we are just composing unwritten novels about the people we meet. There is in every one of us an unending seesaw between the will to live and the will to die. The mind is its own enemy, which fights itself with the innumerable pliant and ineluctable arms of the octopus. It is the soul's duty to be loyal to its own desires. It must abandon itself to its master passion. It is astonishing how the human animal survives its misfortunes. There is no such thing as conversation. It is an illusion. There are intersecting monologues, which is all. Unhappy people are dangerous. It is always one's virtues and not one's vices that precipitate one into disaster. Motherhood is neither a duty nor a privilege, but simply the way that humanity can satisfy the desire for physical immortality and triumph over the fear of death. Only part of us is sane, only part of us loves pleasure and the longer day of happiness, wants to live to our 90s and die in peace, in a house that we built, that shall shelter those who come after us. The other half of us is nearly mad. It prefers the disagreeable to the agreeable, loves pain and its darker night despair, and wants to die in a catastrophe that will set back life to its beginnings and leave nothing of our house save its blackened foundations. 
The day was so delightful that I wished one could live slowly as one can play music slowly. The law, like art, is always vainly racing to catch up with experience. Hatred of domestic work is a natural and admirable result of civilization. The first thing a woman does when she gets a little money into her hands is to hire some other poor wretch to do her housework. What is art? It is not decoration. It is the reliving of experience. The choice between law and justice is an easy one for courageous minds. I have no faith in the sense of comforting beliefs which persuade me that all my troubles are blessings in disguise. When the Spaniards persecuted heretics they may have been crude, but they were not being unreasonable or unpractical. They were at least wiser than the people of today who pretend that it does not matter what a man believes, as who should say that the flavor and digestibility of a pudding will have nothing to do with its ingredients. Music is part of human life and partakes of the human tragedy. There is much more music in the world than is allowed to change into heard sounds and prove its point. I do not think women understand how repelled a man feels when he sees a woman wholly absorbed in what she is thinking, unless it is about her child, or her husband, or her lover. It gives one goose flesh. Everyone realizes that one can believe little of what people say about each other. But it is not so widely realized that even less can one trust what people say about themselves. A strong hatred is the best lamp to bear in our hands as we go over the dark places of life, cutting away the dead things men tell us to revere. Birds sat on the telegraph wires that spanned the river as the black notes sit on a staff of music. If the whole human race lay in one grave, the epitaph on its headstone might well be, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Life ought to be a struggle of desire toward adventures whose nobility will fertilize the soul. But once a culture develops sufficiently to become skeptical, the idea of censorship becomes less attractive. To suppress a book or a picture or a sculpture or a play or a film is a terrible act of aggression against the artist who created it. This is a miming of capital punishment, it destroys the life that has been emanated by a life. Any writer worth his salt knows that only a small proportion of literature does more than partly compensate people for the damage they have suffered in learning to read. A good cause has to be careful of the company it keeps. Art is not a plaything, but a necessity, and its essence, form, is not a decorative adjustment, but a cup into which life can be poured and lifted to the lips and be tasted. Because hypocrisy stinks in the nostrils one is likely to rate it as a more powerful agent for destruction than it is. Those who foresee the future and recognize it as tragic are often seized upon by a madness which forced them to commit the very acts which make it certain that what they dread will happen. To make laws is a human instinct that arises as soon as food and shelter have been ensured, among all peoples, everywhere. Art is at least in part a way of collecting information about the universe. The principle of avoiding the unnecessary expenditure of energy has enabled the species to survive in a world full of stimuli, but it prevents the survival of the aristocracy. The adventure is over. Everything gets over, and nothing is ever enough. Except the part you carry with you. There is no logical reason why the camel of great art should pass through the needle of mob intelligence. Submission to poverty is the unpardonable sin against the body. Submission to unhappiness is the unpardonable sin against the spirit. Women know the damnation of charity because the habit of civilization has always been to throw them cheap arms rather than give them good wages. 
The redemptive power of divine grace no longer seemed credible, nor very respectable in the arbitrary performance that was claimed for it. Unfortunately, all gatherings convened for the betterment of the human lot show a tendency to gas themselves, and not with laughing gas either. If it be in gentlemanly to kiss and tell, it is still further from gentlemanliness to pray and tell. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.